Masechus Bo Bekama Daf Zem Chazan Amud Aleph. We nobody's in Zoom right now, but that's how we're recorded. Zem Chazan Amud Aleph, and we are in the fourth, the fifth line. Osam Chazan Amud Aleph. This shield is the Ilu Nishmas of Imoyer Menachem Ben Akiva Rus Bas Shalom. Sarah Bas Moshe Nefuas Noch Lionel Ben Yuli Oria Yudis Bas Rivka, and 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 Avram Ben Yudis. As it is my birthday, I'll give you a bracha that this year will always be Matzliach and always you should keep being such amazing people, tell me him, so the oh vakish doiro, going so, your vision should improve, your shkofa should improve, okay. Says the Gemara, v'shina Hashem, the fifth line of Samach Zayin Abu Dalif. Shina Hashem, we said yesterday, Shina Hashem is when the status of the object changes, right? Sam Shinu Hashem, Rashi, Toysus actually defines, and I want to see it later, Shina Hashem that's Choshuv and Shina Hashem that's not Choshuv. Some Shina Hashem is, for example, by the the leather that became a leather tray, right? That is not a very important Shina Hashem. According to Toysfus, that only works together with Yush. It's not so significant. Tolev and Asa Ail, let's say when you have a, a, a kid that became a ram, that's more important. There's another definition, and that is what the Gemara just said yesterday, yeah? In other words, there's another aspect. I mean, Tosas obviously does not argue in the Gemara, but there's another aspect also, which is more important, and that is Choyzer Lebrioso, not Choyzer Lebrioso. If the Shinui is reversible, right, then it's not as important as the change which is irreversible. So the Rem, the kid that became Rem, is important and irreversible, and therefore it works even without Yush. Yeah, by itself. It's important enough to work without Yush. Mashenken, when you have a reversible one, then either it doesn't work at all, or it works together with Yush, the reversible one. You have Shinu Hashem, which is reversible. We're going to see an example today. Yes? What do you mean? Ah, Shinu Hashem of a person. That's a different Shinu Hashem. You're pointing, that's nothing to do with, with, uh, with the Mominus, but the Gemara in Rosh Hashanah, around uh, Yudzain over there, the Gemara says there are four things that change a person's uh, din. One of them is Shinu Hashem. That's why when a person is sick, they change his name or they add a name because the muzzle was for X and not for Y. Yeah, but that's a different sugya, but it's a, another another area of Shinu Hashem. Frek de haile gegemure yo v'shinu Hashem v'shinu Hashem shene chozo lebriyoso mi ha v'shinu Are you sure that Shinu Hashem that doesn't go back <clears throat> yeah, that it's point of no return is that really Shinoi? I'll ask you a question from again Tuma Vitaro. Before we continue, let's have a small introduction. Everybody knows that if a person needs to go to mikveh, whether a woman or a girl or anybody, Tome, times the base of mikdash, he can't go to the bathtub. Why can't he go to a bathtub? Why can't he fill a big bathtub or a swimming pool and just go there and finish the story? Because what's wrong? Hmm? Because these water are shuvim. They were drawn by human beings and brought into the pool one way or another. It's not natural rainwater that just fell into the pool, generally speaking. And therefore, mime she'uvin, mime that are drawn by people, or, and this is important to know, when I say drawn, I don't always mean, aloha doesn't only mean a Rivka Imenu style, you know, to take it from the wall and bring it. Any intervention of a kli, once there's any kind of utensil that the water, rainwater, let's say, fell into the kli, and then from the kli, it overflowed into the mikveh, that's also not good. Whenever there's a kli in the middle, generally speaking, whenever there's like a vessel in the middle which is disconnected from the ground, it's not mechuber lekalka, it's a kli that is a mobile thing. Once this is in the middle, that's disqualified in general. We're not learning here Hilchas Mikvois, which are very complex, I'm talking now in general. <coughs> <coughs> However, okay, says the Gemara like this. Barry, look at that, says the Gemara. Tzino, what is Tzino? A pipe. The miikoro ktsitsta, the hashta tzinoiro. How do you make a pipe, let's say a wooden pipe, 
Yeah, a wooden pipe originally was a big log of wood called ktsitsta, like katsuts, a piece, yeah? And now, once you carve it out, you empty the middle, and you create a pipe, but just having the outer layer, the ring, it's called tsinova, which in Hebrew called a pipe. So let's get the introduction here. <clears throat> Whenever you make a pipe, in the olden days at least, a wooden pipe, you have a big log of wood, you carve out, 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 you only have the outer layer thing, and therefore originally was had a one name of called the log of wood. Now it's called a tsino. Okay, Vatanya. So we had Shinu Yashem, Vatanya. Frank Digmar, look at this Bryson. It says as follows Sinor Shechokakoi Ulebasoith Kvooi. Let's say that Sino and the order of how I want to make my own at home mikveh. I know a guy in England, he made his own mikveh in his backyard. Koshal Mahadrin for himself to use, for himself, he's a soyful stam. And he made the whole mikveh and he showed me how he did it. Very nice. Tsino Shechokikoi. Let's say you built the Tsino. To build is not the right. Lechok is to carve out. You carved out the Tsino. So when you had a piece of already made pipe, and afterwards you attached it to the ground. Now, if I have, let you let me ask you a question. Let's say I take uh, a shovel and I just dig from one pool of water, I dig a ditch, okay, like a canal into the mikveh. Is that a problem? No, it's a ground, it's not a cleat. Anything attached to the ground really should be okay. In other words, when I have something that's part of the ground, mechuber lekalka, halachically things that are mechuber lekalka connected to the ground are like the ground itself. Now we say like this, if the tzinor originally was a pipe independent, it was a kli, it was already a kli, and then I attached it to the ground, as we say in old French, too late. Once it's been a pipe by itself, as an entity by itself, and then you connected it to the ground, then we say, no, it remains with the status of a kli. And a kli, uh, no, 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 my friend. A kli on the ground ain't helping. A poison of mikveh disqualifies the mikveh. Is, if that's your, your conduit, that's how the water goes to the mikveh through the, the tsinor, although now it's attached to the ground, but originally it was a kli, it retains the status of a kli, Kli with a mikveh, oh, treif. However, says the Braisa the other way, let's switch the order of the chronology. Kvoi, well, Let's say I attach to the ground a piece of log of wood, a log of wood, kavua, and then I was choikek. I carved it out, I created it to become a tsinor after it was already attached to the ground, and a poesilosa mikveh, then it's good. Why is it good? Because before it became a clean, it was attached to the ground. If I have a log of wood attached to the ground and then I carved it out, it's considered as if really I just dug a hole in the ground. You get it? The order makes a difference. If it had its own entity, its own uh, reality by itself as a clean, too late if you attach it. But the other way, other way around is good. Fred the Gemara, via Mount Chinu Hashem, Mil Sahi. But if you want to tell me that Chinu Hashem is so significant, and we're not only going by reality, we go by how people call it. Remember, what's the difference between Shinu Hashem and Shinu Guf, Shinu Maise? Shinu Maise is a, a reality thing. Nobody can argue. Every little Tim McKenzie sees that's raw wool and that's a sweater. Shinu Hashem is more subtle. Shinu Hashem is how people view it, how people call it, how people define it, right? So now it's all very nice that it's attached to the ground before and after. But if you say Shinu Hashem is so significant, it makes a difference. Even if you attached it to the ground and then you carved it out, it should be possible. Why? Because at the end of the day, people do see that originally I had a log of wood and now I have a sino. Now I have a pipe. So it makes such a difference for Ganev, it should also make a difference for Tum And Yitzchok mentioned, we also use it for Ruchnius reasons for davening, for many other things. And here too, we see the Chinu Hashem, the Choyro, should make a difference. I don't care if it was attached on time. But Lamaisa, here you have a log, and voila, here you have a Tsinor. That should make a difference. Even in reality, the attached to the ground all the time. I don't care about reality. I care about how Cham Yankel and Ruben Shimon Levi, how they would call it. And here it seems like we don't care about it. What's going on here? Answers the Gemara, you're right, conceptually, but shiny She'iva. Here I'm going to throw a bomb, which many people don't know. 
Sheiva, according to many Rishonim, the whole idea that Maim Sheuvim, Maim that are drawn, that are not natural straight from the rain, are they disqualify the mikveh only with the Rabbanon. In other words, according to some Rishonim, but then don't try it at home. According to some Rishonim, a woman who's a Nida, Midoraisa, can go to the swimming pool and become tall. Solve the problem of many people, and that's not La'alocha. Of course, we keep the Rabbanan because we're very orthodox people. But Lemaisa, because the idea of Sheuvim being disqualified and having to have it all natural and straight from the rain or the river, whatever, that's the Rabbanon. Ah, and if so, Rabbanon were Meiko. Rabbanon were easy on us. And Achinami, Shino Yashem would be a significant idea. You're right. When it comes to Gzela, which is the Oraisa, the Oraisa is the Oraisa. But Rabbanon, in their own world, in their own, not little, in their own big world of the Rabbanon, they can decide and say, listen, really, it was originally attached. And you played around with it after it's attached. I, Shino Yashem, we can forgo, forgive, ignore Shino Yashem and decide that it's okay. Because the whole idea of Shuvim is the Rabbanon. With the rice, you can take a bucket of water <laughs> and fill your swimming pool. So since it's the Rabbanon, they're being more lenient. Frag the Gemara, Ihachi, wait, are you telling me Kula the Rabbanon? Let's jump. <laughs> Let's jump on the bandwagon. Iochi, a filo de Reisha Nami. Wait, if so, even in the Reisha, that should be the same. In other words, what did we say in the Reisha? What did we say in the first case? We said that if you had a Tsino, which is independently already a pipe not connected to the ground, look, it's in my hands, the pipe, and now it attached to the ground, that's disqualified. Why? You say it's the Rabbanon. Can't Rabbanon be Mako there also? It's all the Rabbanon. So let them just be easy on us anyways. Answers the Gemara, Nish the same. It's not the same. Awesome over there. You can't ignore that. When it was already considered a Kli, when it was Talush, it was detached from the ground, and it was a Kli, and then you placed it on the ground, that's Rabbanon say, there's a limit how much we can be Mako. You might have a Kli. A Kli. The Tino is not different to, to the cup or to the jug. So let's start the whole demo over here. <laughs> now words, it's a Kli. Now you attached it, it doesn't smell good. That, that's already too much to take. We can't do that. Oh, over here, ain't those Kli all of Betolush. Over here, when it was detached, it never was a Kli. It was a raw piece of material. And as I told you yesterday, regarding Tuma Betara, raw material is nothing. It's not Mechabal Tuma, it's not called Sheiva. Gornished. Mimela, since when it arrived first in the ground, attached to the ground, it started on right foot. It was really raw, and therefore it's not called Shuvim Bechlal. And later carved it out, so really it's okay. I, you have a side problem called Shino Yashem, that I can overcome. Get it? We have two realms over here reality and the Shem. It's not the reality, the Bryson makes a lot of sense. Here, the reality was, I have a clear, look, I have a clear. Now you attach it to the gun, too late. It's a clear already. Masha'imken, when we say that the kli was, only became a kli after it was attached to the ground. <coughs> so the my side played around, played around with it when it was on the ground. It's like digging a hole in the ground. Digging a hole in the ground, it's fine. The log of wood is part of the ground. It's part of nature. Then I dug it, then I carved it out, it's fine. Ah, you're telling me Shino Yashem? You're worried that even though after attach, being attached to the ground, it was raw and then it was a tzino, that problem we can overcome by saying the Rabbanon. If the only problem is the Shem, Shino Hashem, eh, Rabbanon tell you, don't worry about us, we know what we're doing and we're making over here. So really, we're okay with Shino Hashem, even though it's Shino Hashem She'en O'Choyzer, Shino Hashem She'en O'Choyzer is a Shinoi, and it works either alone or with Yush. <coughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Shino Hashem Shein works alone. Oy vav oy. Shino Hashem, which is irreversible, irreversible, works by itself. Only the reversible one is a question. Mesevi. Another question now from a different Brysa, and and maybe it's Mishnah, actually, I'm not sure. Mesevi is usually a Brysa, and now we're going to say something that Ellen said a few days ago. Here comes Ellen's big moment. Mesevi. Aganev, question. Aganev is a thief that comes in secret, yeah, he works uh, behind the scenes. The Gazlan is one in your face, not in your face, hopefully. He takes it by force. The Anas. Anas is a person, not like in modern Hebrew. Anas means a person who is a very nice guy. He snatches it for you, and then he takes and he takes, he gives money. The Gazlan also overpowers you. 
The Anas gives money. He snatches it. He's chamsan, it's called. In other words, he, he snatches it from you and you have no choice, but he gives Hamas. you the money. Like Hamas, Hamas. Expropriator. Of course, we all use this word all the time. Agana v'agazlan v'anas. Okay, the kids are people who illegally took possession of someone else's money. Hekdeshon hekdesh. Let's say they're makdish something, the very from, they took an animal, now they're makdish to base amikdash, and it works. Hekdeshon is hekdesh. Their hekdesh applies, it's hekdesh. The trumosan, truma. Their truma is truma. They, they, they stole a whole bunch of fruit from the person, from the legal owner, and what happened? Now the truma is truma. By the way, Rashi points out, if you notice, hekdesh and hekdesh also lehanois. Rashi doesn't say they can bring the korban to base amikdash. Look at Rashi, he's very careful. It's hekdesh with application that you can't actually benefit from it. It belongs to Hashem, but it doesn't mean you can bring it. Maybe Rashi means to say that's all that it gets you. It only gets you there that it has the status of Kedusha, but maybe you can't bring it to Besam Mikdash because of mitzvah baba veil. I'm just suggesting. It almost on Tuma says Rashi also lezorim. <coughs> also lezorim is zar. Let's say they took, they got 100 kilos of grapes and they brought Truma, a mashu, one, one fiftieth. Let's say they gave to the coin. We have a coin over here, Baruch Hashem. They gave it to the coin. The truma is a truma. Even before they gave it to the coin, Israelim cannot benefit from it. My soy son, my son, they took a my son, they took one tenth. The my son is considered my son. So wait a second. A person who's not an owner <coughs> cannot be makdish someone else's anything, right? I told you that many times. I cannot be makdish or my son or do any halachic, um, any halachic application to someone else's money. And those people, it doesn't say that there was any shinui. So what was the story? Only Yush. We assume that Ganev and Gazlan is all Yush. Rashi says, Al Makani Lakzela be Yush. You see the Yush works. What? You see that it works by itself. And we always say, according to Rav Yosef at least, and Yush Baolam Klan. Yush doesn't work. So why are you telling me here Yush works? <clears throat> he stole the fruit. Nothing changed the fruit. It doesn't say, right? What did he do? He stole 100 kilos of uh, grapes. Why? Why? Right. We have two geniuses here in class. Alan and Lamaisha. Answers the Gemara. Amri, we say, Hosom, Ika Shinu Yashem. Over there, there's Shinu Yashem. Why is it called Shinu Yashem? Demi, Koro, Tivla. Originally, it was called Tevel. What's Tevel? Tovlo. Not good. Tevel means when it's all mixed together. Free Meister. That's maybe a nice Yeshivish English. Free Meister fruit is Tevel. When it's all mixed together, before Meiser was taken, it's called Tevel. It has a different halachic name. The Hashta, Bnei Choyrin. The Hashta Truma. Now it's Truma. It's all different halachic name. Way different than before. Tim McKenzie does know. Okay, good for him. One minute, please. Ekdesh, same thing. Mikorochulin v'ashta Ekdesh. Now we're mechadish this idea. In other words, because it was Chulin before, now it's called Hekdesh. It's the same animal frolicking around the garden. It wasn't yet taken based on Ekdesh. But before it was called Chulin, now it has a very different halachic status with tons of nafkaminas. It's Hekdesh. That Shinu Yashem, as of itself, or with Yush, okay, works. Now, Tosis points out, before I ask your questions, Tosis points out that this could be, I'll ask your question. Is this Shinu a Choyza or in Choyza? Is this Shinu reversible or irreversible? Is it irreversible or not? Yeah. Why, yes? Kodesh, Kodesh, why, why is it? Why? <clears throat> Pod is not exactly reversible. Very nice, though. Says Toysfus. Toysfus says, Mikoro uh, Tivla. Look at Toysfus, Mikoro Tivla. Yeah. But Tevel. We're talking about Tevel. We're talking here about Toysfus in the, it's about fourth or fifth, it's in the sixth or so wide line. Says Toysus, a tevel was not gemeistered, now it's meister, or truma. Prek Toysus, v'afo gab di shinu echoizer lebrioso elidei she'elo. Pidian is a whole new thing. It's, it's a good question, but when it comes to, uh, what's his name? To fruit, if somebody decided that those uh, one-fiftieth of the grape is truma, or one-tenth is meister, he can reverse it by doing what? Shel akatos nedorim. Just like a person makes a neder, he can be matil the neder, he goes to a chochom, right? And he's matil the neder. You can also reverse your truma. We see in other places in the Gemara that a person can reverse the truma process 
and bring it back to being Chulin or Tevel. He called Malcolm answers to us, Lo chashu lo shinu chazal lebriyosoi. It's not called shinu chazal lebriyosoi. Why not? Kevin the loy shchicha. It's not common because it's not commonly done. Usually, people they don't really reverse the process of truma. If they decide that something is truma, it stays that way, and that's the normal way of the world. It's very uncommon to change it. Mimela, what do we say? We say that it's not called chazal lebriyosoi. Meaning, we see that a lot of human psychology, human norms. Is what makes a difference. How do people call it in the street, and what do people actually do with it? If it's not normally reversed, it's called irreversible because people see it as a very chosh of People see, oh, look at the Ghana. They made it from chulin into truma. Oh, that's all new thing, which is not normally reversible. It's called irreversible. That's the chiddush of Toisves. <coughs> okay, I should not cough when I'm uh, being recorded. Basically. <laughs> What we're saying is like this. When a person steals, let's recap on all things. First of all, the person needs to, how to steal in three existence. <laughs> he does Kenyan, a physical Kenyan of Mashiach, Hagbo. It's in his possession halachically. He didn't just look at it or, or fiddled with it. He halachically took possession. Then, Yush. What does Yush do? Yush means, well, it's still yours, Mr. Ganev. But on the other hand, there's a posuk that keeps whispering in the corner, the Heshiv, the Heshiv. In other words, you have the chiyuv all the time to return it, so it's not really yours. You have to return it. The person was miyash. That alone apparently doesn't do the trick. Yush alone means that the person is like slowly losing his ownership because he gave up hope, and that yush allows you. And that's by the way, Tosfos, which I wanted to tell you, I'll tell you about them. Tosfos says, "Im en yush en shem hekdesh chal olam." If not for yush, you can't be makdish. Yush, yush allows me to get to the next stage of final Kenyan of Hekdesh. Once I said this behemoth is Mukdush to basically from Ganev. This animal, Harezu Khatos, let's say, what happens? Boom, there's no Veheshiv anymore. Ha, ah, Mazel Tov. The, Vehesh, the annoying Veheshiv is lifted off. Why? Because now it's not Asher Gzel Asher Gozal. It's a different item. I stole Hulin. Now it's Hekdesh. Veheshiv doesn't apply anymore. Of course, it doesn't go scot free, all you justice seekers. Of course, if the animal costs 5,000 pounds, he has to pay 5,000 pounds, no question. But he doesn't have to give the actual animal. I, what did I say about Rashi? It says Rashi also lehenois. Of course, it's also lehenois. What's Rashi telling me? Say here, I'm pointing it here for the Zoom people. The also lehenois. You're not allowed to benefit because you can't bring it to base some and atone for your sin because that's called mitzvah boba vera. So even though it does belong to Hashem and you can't benefit from it, it's just a way to say it belongs to the Abishta. What do you do with this Corbin is a good question. I don't know. But Lamaisa, you cannot actually bring it to Bessemic Edition Kapara because the very same second that you acquired it is the very same second of Hekdash. That's right, the Mitzvah Baba Veo. That's too much to tolerate. That's too ugly. Mashain can. If we'd say, I'm repeating yesterday, had we said Yush Koine alone, remember with Tech Trova? If Yush is koine alone, and by the way, soon we're going to see it later on again, if Yush koine by itself, then it wouldn't be a problem. You can bring it to Beit Samikdash too, because Yush means it's completely mine. Now I'm not, there's something that's mine, that would be okay. But since the, the Kenyan and the Hekdash come hand in hand, that's too much. That's Mitzvah Baba Vera. You're hot on the crime while you mark this, uh, Rabbi Yeshgul. It works, but it stinks. It works, but you can't bring it to Beit Samikdash. Okay. I know, more questions, yes? Are you still? Yes. Now, Omar Rav Chizda, Omar Bionestan, first wide line. Omar Rav Chizda, Omar Bionestan, this is very similar to what we saw before about the origins, the makor of Kenyan Gzela. Omar Rav Chizda, Omar Bionestan, Minan Shilu Shu Koine, how do you know really from the Torah that Shinui is the Kenyan? How do you know that if an animal or the object were changed now, belongs to the Ganav, and all he has to do Guilty or not, he has to pay the cash. How do you know? Shneemal. Well, the first source is what we saw before. Veishiv esagzelo. It says veishiv esagzelo. Matel gloma asher gozal. The Torah says he should return the stolen object that he stole. Well, if it's a stolen object, obviously he stole it. Yeah. Surely, shall we say surely? No, I don't like surely. Agzela asher gozal. The gzela that he stole. Bring back the stolen object that you stole. What is the year? You're smart because you saw it before. Thank you. I appreciate it. Answer Zygmunt. 
אם כן שגוזל יחזיר, if it's כן שגוזל, אשר גוזל זה אז מין death is stole, אשר גוזל means the same state that it was stolen, that it remained the same status as before, you have to return the object, ואם לאו, דומי בעלמא בי שלומי, very good, which means a xena shal gozel comes to tell you, give back, I'll translate it to English, give back the stolen object as long as it is a shal gozel, as long as it is the same way as it was when you stole it, that you stole, the same status you stole. Once it's different, shinu roshut, shinu Hashem, shinu maise, shinu my grandmother, shinu whatever, then it's yours and you've got to pay back. We're ignoring Yush now because Yush is just not the source here. Hi, Frank de Gamora, but now as opposed to before, now we're starting to ask questions. Frank de Gamora, are you sure that the words Asher Gozal are used for that? Hi, Asher Gozal, those words Asher Gozal, we buy, we use them later on to teach me something else. Let me uti to exclude Gozal, Gezel, excuse me, Oviv, She'en Moisif Chemesh Al Gezel Oviv. Let me ask you a question. A person says the Gemara, a person will translate and then I'll ask. A person does not have to add Chemesh which is the fifth or the fourth actually, on the stolen goods of his father. What? So like in all good mafia stories, the main mafioso died and he left a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, you know, garbage behind him. So now the person stole from someone and he admitted that he stole, even though beforehand he was Nish Balasheker, yeah, he made a false oath and then what he admitted, that father, Mr. Father Mafioso, what does he have to do? What does he have to pay? The original, not two, plus fifth. Fifth, no, not fifth. The Chomish, very good. Chomish is fifth, or a fourth, because Chomish is a fifth. Or a fourth, because Chomish ben Lagav ben Labal, I'm sure. That's uh, 20 or 25 percent. That's not the issue now. Now, the person dropped dead. Hashem already couldn't take it anymore. And now that person died. Now his children, they have to, as I would say, clear up the mess. So a person has to pay his old father, his dead father's debts. Now he has to, you know, tie the, the loose ends. Says the Torah, a person has to give back his father's stolen goods, although there's going to be a lot of issues later on we're going to have with that. But he does not have to pay the extra fee. That's the Chiddush. And what? Not the Choymesh. Yeah, Choymesh is not exactly... Chomish is kapor. No, it's not a knas. It's a kapor. Kefil is knas and chomish is kapor. He doesn't have to pay the extra. Why? Because the Torah says, Asher Gozal, that he stole. Get it? You told me that the extra words, Asher Gozal, that he stole, are coming to tell me to exclude Shinoi. No. I have another usage for those words, which are mefurish later on in the Masechta, that it says, your Gezel or his Gezel, Asher Gozal. If Reuven stole, Reuven has to give back this plus fifth if he swore the da da da. But Reuven and someone else's debt that he owes, meaning the father who left behind this legacy, that he doesn't have to pay a fifth. Oh, wait a second. Now we have musical chairs. We have two games, ping pong and musical chairs in the Gemara many times. Musical chairs. Who's going to sit on the throne? There's two extra words, Asher Gozal. You're telling me Asher Gozal is used for what? To tell me Shinui, the Shinui Koine. You will see a different story that is coming to tell me your gzela excluding your father's gzela. So what's the real truth? Answers the Gemara, there's room for everybody. The chair is big enough for everybody. Answers the Gemara, im ken, nichtav rachmano, beishiv es gzeiloi. If all the Torah wants to tell me is to say his gzela has to pay fifth extra and not his father, the Torah could have, instead of saying gzela, the Torah, as opposed to English, as we all know, in Hebrew you can say his Object in one word, right? How do you say in Hebrew his house? Beito. You can say by shalom, beito. The magic of Hebrew as opposed to English and other European languages. Eshivas gzeloi. Say in one word, eshiv, give back, return his gzela as opposed to his father. So we still have an extra word, asher gozal lamali. So still the words asher gozal are an extra chair, an extra word, asher gozal. Why is it that? Why does it have to be that? It's still redundant. Asher Gozal, that is so. Shema minot, Tarti, beautiful. That's how we learn both. Gzei lo, Asher Gozal teaches me both. Because we could have Kilo given up on an extra word and also on the conjunction Gzei loi. 
Now you see two things here, also to exclude the fifth from the father, the, the heir doesn't have to pay the fifth for this thief of a father, and also Kenyan Zela is Beshinu, very nice. Veika de Amri, other, now there's another version who says the complete opposite. Oh, we're in for a surprise now. Veika de Amri, some say, exactly the same person. Veika de Amri means there's like another version in Bismendrash of about what did Rav Chizdom Rabbi Yonason say? Yeah, some people heard that him saying him saying X, and other people said heard him saying Y. Some say that Rav Chizda, on behalf of Rabbi Yonason, says Minayin l'shinu she'enoi koine. How do you know Shino is not koine? Don't fire me. Ain't a koine. Are you happy with that? Shino is not koine. Uh huh. Are you guys okay? You happy? Very nice. Moshe is the man today. Ain't a koine. Some people say such as Toysfus that this brisa doesn't come to completely be heretical and say there's no Shinui ever. If the Shinui is not a good one, such as reversible Shinui. And by the way, my friends, Shinui Maise, which is reversible, is not coin at all, not even with Yush. Yeah, I told you. Let's say I took planks of wood, very primitive looking ones, and I just banged some nails, okay? And they became a box, not attached anywhere to the ground. And I can very easily undo the, the screws, the, the nails, and give it back more or less to its original form. It's not coin bichlal, not coin. It's not real, it's not called shinu. It's so easily reversible, modular. And therefore, maybe that's what the Brisa means. Very good. That's what Toysi says. Very nice. There could be another idea, by the way. What? Ah, no, that doesn't, that goes without saying. So there's no, there's no gzela bichlal. Or you could say it's Bishamai. I don't like to say it because Bishamai, we're not supportive of them, remember? But Bishamai don't believe shinu is coin. Okay, okay, so what's the source that Shinu is not going? Eh? Listen to this. Shinem are Beishivas Exela, the same source. Beishivas Exela, Mikol Mokoin, which means once the Torah told me the Heishivas Exela, you have to give back the stolen object and you ignore the second part of the Fosuk. Heishivas Exela means you have to give the Exela, Mikol Mokoin means any shape or form. Even if it was what one thing became another thing, maybe like Moshe says, reversible. It's still somehow connected. You have to give it back. The actual object, not, not money. Break the Gemara. How can you read the Pasuk halfway? What is this? Excuse me. It says, forget. It says, that you stole. If there was a change, then you're not supposed to give back the changed object. Answers the Gemara, no. What was before a question is now an answer. Well, you know what we do with the words of Shir Gozal? We don't use them from King and Zela. Use them to teach you about the son of the Ganev. Very good. It comes to tell you, the word Asher Gozal comes to tell you, if you yourself stole, you have your own bank account in Shamaim, you have to give an extra fifth if you Nishba Vehoido. But on your father, as much as you do have to deal with your father's debts and Gnevis, the fifth you don't have to give. And they don't learn that there are two extras. This version says it's only one extra, Asher Gozal. Asher Gozal is coming to tell me the Tate, the Tate Ganev story. But when it comes to a Gzela itself, Gzela, Gzela, you always have to give Gzela as it is, or even if it was changed, you still have to give it the way it is. Now, the way it is currently. Omar Ula. Comes Ula, and Ula comes to teach me, Minayin liyu shayna koine. How do you know you is not koine? Is that a local amaisa? Yush alone. Is koina not koina? Give me a local amaisa. Yush alone, I said. Yush alone is koina? No. No. No, no, no. And it's either it's either that we pass in like Rav Yosef against Rabba, or alternatively, even when Rabba said Yush koina, we could interpret his words, it's Yush plus something else, which I don't think is true, but theoretically. The kids are Yush alone is not koina. How do you know? Maybe Yush is good enough. Maybe once a person gave up hope, like in Aveda, right? Once I heard the, the magic, beautiful words, music to my ears, the person says, oh, I overhear him talking in the office the other way, the other side of the corridor. Oh, that golden watch uh, gave up on him. Oh, now I can keep the gold watch. What do I have to give him? Cash. I'll give him cash, but the gold watch I'll keep. No, it doesn't work. Yush alone is not coin. But how do you know? How do you know? Shenema. Because it says in the Novi, Thinking Malachi, 
It says, Vesim Gozul es apiseach besachoyle. The Novi rebukes, the Novi scolds and giving to Chocho to the mention of that generation. And he says, guys, what are you bringing to Beis HaMikdash? You bring to Beis HaMikdash stolen goods. In other words, you know that in Beis Rishon already, unfortunately, especially towards the end, people were misbehaving. They're abusing Beis HaMikdash. They used it like, you know, a way to quick atonement for the sins. And they would bring just anything to appease Hashem, just to tick the box. They would bring a gozul, a stolen good, piseach, a lame, not a lame duck, but a lame uh, sheep, a lame goat, a lame whatever. Besachoyle, the sick, you bring korbanos that are apostle, disqualified, the class B, and that's what you bring. Okay, what does it have to do with us? Says the 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 the, the, the Gmolo, Gozu, do me the piseach. We see that the Novi compares. The Novi is not just throwing uh, derogatory terms. He's choosing his words, and he compares Gozul to piseach. Gozul, the stolen one, has something in common with the lame one, with the one that that can walk cannot walk properly and will never be able to. Oh, what's the comparison? Ma piseach the lame just like the lame animal is will never be well again. There's no takona. There's no remedy for it. Av gozul the lace takanto. Gozul too is no remedy. Gozul there's no takona. What does that mean? Loishna lifneyush veloishna acheryush, which means you cannot just like if you were makdish a lame animal, you can never bring it. Nothing will change. No magic tricks. So too by gozul some chazanamud beis. But Gozul will say the same. There's no remedy. Which possible remedy is there for Gozul? It's still stolen. It's in the hands of the Ghanav. Didn't return it. What would I think? Yush. One would say, well, maybe I should wait and hear in two, three, four, five days, Mr. Victim of my neighbor, <laughs> the fire that I stole from him. I'm going to hear him saying, oh, I lost it. I gave up off. It was stolen. And then I'll be able to bring it to Vesa Mikdash. Oh, Tzadik says the Novi, no. Yush alone is not a Takono. Just like you can't revive or heal the, the one that's uh, that's uh, lame, so too you can't revive the yush, the, the gozul through yush. Yush is not a solution. Okay, so now Rove Omar Mehocho, Rove says another source, Kobonoi Veloya Gozul. Sorry. Rove says, Kobonoi. The Torah says that at the beginning of Vaikra, a person brings his korban. His korban is opposed to what? Of course, you bring your korban and not someone else's korban, which means if I did not steal it even, let's say there was no Mashiach, Shlomo, like you're saying, there's no Kenyan, then of course I can't bring someone else unless I'm a Shliach. I'm not saying he sent me as a proper messenger. Let's say I take someone else's korban without Kabono to steal and I bring it. Of course, it doesn't work. We already know you can't do anything halachic with your friend's items, property without his permission. So what? Korbon noi, veloy hagodul, comes to tell me, even though you stole it and you halachically are already an owner, because a gazlan at some point is an owner, it is, he is, he just has to give back the cash. Maybe now, as the Torah loy hagodul, gozul, he cannot bring the stolen good, Amos, exactly when, continues the Gemara, which I already explained to you before. What, what is the Torah exactly telling me? What's, at which point is the Hiddish for me to know that the gazlan? Cannot bring the korban. Oh, we're repeating, we're reviewing everything for the third time. It's beautiful. If on Sunday I pulled it from Yenes, don't tell him, don't tell him, yeah. I took my neighbor's sheep and I stole it secretly into my backyard, but it was not me. She's still looking frantically all over. And then I was Makdish. Then I said, This Bema is Hekdish. And it's still under his non use Shita. Of course, I know it can't be Makdish. Why do you need a pasuk for that? Remember what I told you a few times? It says, Ish ki is beisoy. A man can only be Makdish his own house. What does that mean? It says the Gemara in a few places, I think soon also. Ma beisoy bil shusoy, afkol bil shusoy. Big yesod b'cholotay rukula. I can only be Makdish something that is mine and is also under my control. Yeah? So therefore, if somebody stole and there was no use yet, there was no Kenyan Gneva yet, it's physically by the Ganev, but I'm still looking for it and I want it, then nobody can be Makdish. I cannot be Makdish because it's not under my control, and he cannot be Makdish because everybody knows that before Yush, it's definitely not his. So nobody is a full owner. 
It's in a twilight zone. Nobody can be Makdashit. I don't need a posuk for that. I don't need this posuk for that. I have another posuk. Elalav must be Le'acher Yush. Aha. Le'acher Yush. Must be on Sunday, I stole it. Monday is uh, quick to give up. On Monday, he said, Oh, I heard him saying in Shul, Oh, my goat will never be, <laughs> he'll never come back to me. So now on Tuesday, maybe now it can be Makdish, because it was Yush. Oh, Yush, maybe Yush is a Kenyan. Ask Rabba, maybe Yush is a Kenyan. Maybe now it can be Makdish. No, no, no. Says the Torah, No, you cannot. In other words, Yush is not Koine. This is how we're saying now. That's exactly what Torah is telling me. Yush alone is not Koine. I, Frek, everybody's going to shout at me. But when he was Makdish, yeah, he created the Matzav of Shinui. That's Mitzvah Boba Veiro. Yush alone was not a cutoff point. After the Yush, it still belongs to the original owner. It's beginning to make the step in the right direction. But the Mice, it still belongs to who? To the original owner. And you can now, how, how come it can be Makdishit? Because the Ekdish itself will create the Shinui. <laughs> It's like two things happening together. The Shin and Hekdash, that works. And, and the Hekdash will be Hekdash. We can bring him to Besam Hekdash. You're a thief. And you stealing as your Makdash, that's a terrible, ugly mitzvah, baba meira. It's not working. But one thing we see for sure, Yush alone is not Koine. Because if Yush alone would be Koine, just without Shinui, then post Yush, I can do whatever I want. Mitzvah, baba meira is not dealing with a dark past before Kenyan. It's just something from his dark history, dark past. That's fine. Uh, good. Therefore, we see from the fact that you cannot bring it to base of Mikdash, you, even after Yush, Yush is not coin alone. But if Yush would be coin alone, you would be able to bring it to base of Mikdash, and it would not even be considered this Baba Okay? Now, no, no, no. Give me one second. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's a queue, and I'll, I'll be with you soon. Just Four lines to the two dots, and I promise I'll answer your questions. I'll try. <laughs> Frag the Gemara, Rava, it's a very nice answer, but that's not, Rava's being inconsistent. Frag the Gemara, Rava, who the Omar, the Gozo Kob and the Chavre. Remember, Rava was attacked yesterday about the story of Rabba, and then Rava said another answer. You know what the Spostok is talking about? That somebody took a ready made Corbin. The original owner, he didn't steal from him a hole, remember? He didn't steal a secular animal. He wants a ready-made one to the microwave. <laughs> he wants already a carbon that's dedicated already to chop it and be miscaper. So Rav gave that answer. Why is Rav answering the different answers? Answers the Gemara. Iboy say mahodobe. Rav can regret. Rav and Chinami says a different opinion now. Rav is now changing his mind, giving him another shot to the posuk. And both talk him, shot him can be good. Iboy say alternatively, chad minayu Rav Popa Moro. Alternatively, one of these two pshotim were not said by Rava by Rav Popo. You're asking Rava said X, Rava said Y? No. Rav Popo said X and Rava said Y. It's not a steer in Rava. Questions and comments, Baruch was first and then Ellen. Yes. Oh, that's it. That's that's the Matona. Frek the Heide Gegemure. No, no, no. No, we're in a whole new thing. Now we are starting a new section of the Mishnah. We saw in the Mishnah, and we all know, that you tell me, if a person slaughtered or sold on an animal which is not an ox or a sheep, does he have to pay four or five? No. Chicken, you have to pay four or five if you shecht it? No. Why? The Torah says, shor or se. Shor or se only, not other ones. Let me ask you a question. On Saturday, your animal on Shabbos has to rest. It does. Whatever that means. It's a big sugya. Your animal Shabbos has to rest. You know which animals the Torah mentioned? Only shor, the chamor. Yeah, and then it says other animals as well. So Shabbos is not a good example. Aveda, excuse me. Aveda. Let's say it says Aveda, if a person lost his donkey or his cow, then I have to give it back to him. That's what it says in the Torah. What about if he lost his duck? His favorite duck, do you have to give it back to him? Yes. Why? The Torah only said, show the chamor. So you see, sometimes the Torah refers to specific animals, and it means all animals. And here, Shaul Vaseh is exclusively only Shaul Vaseh. The question is why? No, it's not Kalupat. We saw Daphne and Helmut Beis that most, most halachas related to animals are learned from Shabbos. In Shabbos, it says, Shaul Vachamocha v'chol behem techo. It is, uh, it's a Gzera Shavu. Just like in Shabbos, it says two animals. And then in Shabbos, it says, and all other animals. 
your iguana or panda bear also have to rest on Shabbos. Your panda bear rests on Shabbos? Of course, you have all <laughs> rest on Shabbos. So too, we learn from Shabbos to all other areas of Allah and the Torah, where the Torah gives you examples, it means not only these two, it means all other animals as well, which only strengthens our question. Why is it that the all, almost the only time in the Torah when we're stuck with the two examples and we don't apply to other animals is by Tzvich or Mechira? Why? applies to show Why? Nela, let us learn show show Mishabis. Why don't we learn Shovo? Show show from Shabbos. just like by Shabbos, just like in Shabbos, it says Mufurash in the Torah in Mount Sinai, the Ten Commandments, it says so the show in Shabbos schleps with him all other animals imaginable. And so too, it says show. Wait, Afghan, here too. Here too, when it comes to steal, now, to Shtvich Mechira, past the stealing, he should learn from Shabbos. All animals that are kosher, that are shechted or sold on, I should get four or five. I don't know, four or five. That's a good question. But something, yeah, why is it just a regular kefal? Why don't, why did you disconnect between Tzvich HaMechir of the Ganev and Shabbos and Cholot HaRakula? Omer Ove, Omer Kro, Shov Se, Shov Se, Shnei Peomim, Apala. As opposed to other mitzvahs Torah that are related to animals, I recommend if you want to chazer, you can re- review Nun Hei Omud Beis. That's where the entire sugi appears. Watch it online. Yeah, Baba Kama Nun Hei Omud Beis. And over here, as opposed to other places, the Torah repeats itself twice and says Shol Veseh, and again it says Shol Veseh, which means Shol Veseh in Midachina Loi. The Torah wants to be very specific and repeat in order to stress and say Shol Veseh, uh-uh-uh, Shol Veseh, meaning I'm not interested in any import-expert relationship with Halacha called Shabbos. I have my own snobbish kind of outlook in our club of Tvicho Mechira, Twice, Shovase comes to set only Shovase, nobody else. Now, I'm not reading the Posuk inside, maybe I should. I'll tell you how the Posuk basically repeats itself. It's very easy. It says in the Posuk, if a man steals Shovase, da da da, yeah, and then that's the storyline, that's the crime, that's the exciting part of the story. And then the Gemara says, <laughs> then the Torah says, when he talks about the crime, it repeats itself and it says about another crime, the punishment. When it talks about the punishment, it says you have to return five instead of the shal and four instead of the she. And that's double. I could have, I could have, you know, uh, gave up on one. You said if he stole shal of a se, right, then he has to give back against the shal against the se. Therefore, one of them is redundant and comes to tell me that here it's only shal of a se and it's not all other animals as opposed to Shabbos. Break the Gemara, Hainiata says the Gemara, excuse me, which one of the two exactly is redundant? Which show the set would you give up on? Which one would you, Arava Goen, which one would you erase from the Torah? Ilema show the set for the Seifa Miata. If you want to say to show the set of the Seifa, the Seifa is when the Torah gives you the punishment. You have to give back four from the set and five for the bull. The Nichta Vlachmona. Let me, yeah, let me suggest the following. The Torah should write as follows. Right? It says in the crime you stole show and you you slaughtered it kosher or you sold it. You can omit the word show at the end of the story when it talks about the punishment. If you just say five instead of him and four instead of him, would that work? That's not gonna work. I wouldn't have understand it. Because of Achmono Hachi says that tomorrow. It wouldn't make sense. Hava Amina, I would have made the mistake by Shlumi Tisha. Ah, get it? I would have thought if it says four instead and five instead, and you don't specifically designate four for the se and five for the bull, I would say four and five, I think, are nine. And I would say it's just a regular payment of nine. Tachtov, instead of it, who's it? Who's it? I don't know who's it. Yeah, the show five instead of four. So it has to repeat itself. It's a box and a box, and then it's ticking each box separately. 
So why are you telling me it's redundant? It's not redundant. Da -da 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 -da. We are in suspense. Yeah, continue. One more line. Yeah. No, 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 no. We'll continue there tomorrow. Okay. Atzlocha <laughs> Rabba, and thank you very much. And have a great day. And atzlocha bechol inyoni. May we always be healthy, wealthy, close to Hashem, be able to learn all achaim. Be'iyun be'bikiyas be'koyne kol chelkei toyro. Slochon.